Satisfied, Chapter 10, A Miraculous Ladybug Fan Fiction, written and narrated by Little Old Cole, who is me. If you haven't seen the previous nine chapters of this series, the, the links are in the description box below. Feel free to check those out. If you enjoy this chapter, Satisfied, please do not hesitate to smash that like button. Um, leave a comment for the algorithm satisfied if you do not know what to comment because that really helps and subscribe and hit that bell for every notification Now then please enjoy satisfied chapter 10 Man, I still wish we'd done like a stag party. It would have been off the hook Uh-huh Adrian responded face in hand while flicking a pen around the table It would have been like the best way to usher you into marriage to or something. <laughs> yep, best way. Wait, marriage dumb is a real word? Ugh. Nino's eyes widened as he whipped out his phone. Yeah, totally. Okay, now I know you're tripping. He shoved the phone into Adrian's face, showing the search results for Is marriage dumb a word? Adrian just batted his friend's arm away and rolled his eyes. Dude, chin up! It's your wedding tomorrow! Nino snatched the pen, making Adrian sigh. I know, I know. We've just been here too long, and it's getting pretty boring, that's all. It was their last rehearsal, and everyone basically knew where to be and what to do already. But now, the wedding planner had some issue with a girl's entry or something, and they were working on it, while Adrian and Nino sat at a table, waiting. Nino looked at his friend suspiciously. It's been like 45 minutes, Adrian. That's just 15 minutes longer than the time we usually spend here. And that's only because Marinette was late. Adrian found himself faintly smiling as he remembered how Marinette stumbled in after Alia had called her numerous times. Her hair was a mess, and she had bags under her eyes. Adrian stopped smiling as his eyes searched for her amid the bridesmaids. It was his fault she overslept and looked like the walking dead now. He would have too, if he didn't have Kagami there to wake him. Nino cleared his throat and Adrian turned to see him looking at him with, an, with a raised eyebrow. Dude, are you sure about this? Sure about what? This! Nino gestured around. I don't know if you haven't thought about this already, but this isn't dating. This is marriage, Adrian. It's the real deal. Adrian shook his head. Look, Nino... Listen, man, I'm not trying to change your mind or anything. I mean, I'm your best man. I support you and all. But I can advise you. And right now, I need you to think about what you're getting into. This is a lifelong commitment. Don't even consider divorce as an option. That's not healthy. The questions you need to ask yourself are, is this relationship fair? Or... Is this marriage an I'll be happy when, or is this who I really want to spend the rest of my life with? Adrian snorted. If I knew you were a marriage counselor, we would have come to you instead and saved some money. I'm serious, Adrian. I hate to see you in turmoil like this. Eno said. Adrian sighed. It's, it's not just about my ha- that is it, cousin. I will not tolerate any more of this tomfoolery. They were interrupted by an angry Felix storming past them towards the door, being followed by Kim. Adrian knew that it was only right that he included his cousin in his wedding, but he feared how he would get along with his other two groomsmen, Kim and Max, and his fears were just confirmed. Come on, Adrian 2.0! We just want to see you armpit for it! Felix paused at the door to give Kim a withering stare as he curled his lips in disgust. 
He looked over at Adrian. I'm leaving. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye, Felix. Thanks for coming. Adrian called, but he was already gone. Okay, that's a wrap, he heard the wedding planner say, and on cue, Alia and Marinette collapsed onto the pews, exhausted. Adrian turned to look at Nino and smiled at his friend's concerned expression. He stood and swung his jacket over his shoulder, placing a firm hand on Nino's shoulder. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. I hope you're right, man. Nino stood as the girls limped over and held Adrian's shoulder. I hope you're right. Adrian lay staring at his ceiling and listening to the silence of the empty house he was in. Kagami hadn't stayed over tonight, though it made sense for her not to. He had retired to bed an hour ago, hoping to get an early night and enough rest, but here he was, wide awake and going insane. His mind would just not shut up. It felt like his heart and his mind were at war, when all he wanted was just a little peace to fall asleep. Adrian sat up and rubbed his eyes before looking around his dark room. Plague was nowhere to be found, no doubt rummaging through the fridge downstairs. Without his permission, his mind cast itself to the conversation with Nino earlier that day. Is this relationship fair? Adrian scratched his jaw while deliberating an answer. Well, he began to no one in particular. It's fair to Kagami, I guess. She deserves all the love and happiness in this world, so... <clears throat> he cleared his throat. Is this marriage an I'll be happy when? Marriage isn't just about one of the partners. The other's happiness matters too. And it's not like I could be unhappy with Kagami even after all these years, right? The walls only echoed his question back at him. Is this who I really want to spend the rest of my life with? Adrian hesitated. Wait. Why was he even doing this self-questionnaire? Oh. Oh, no. Was, was he? Adrian's breath caught. Was he getting cold feet? And now? Adrian groaned as she fell back on the bed. He needed to clear his head. Stat. You want to go for a run or something? came Plague's voice, and Adrian jumped to see his iridescent green eyes floating near the door. He had probably just come in, but how did he know just what Adrian needed? He nodded word wordlessly, and Plague gulped down a He nodded wordlessly, and Plague gulped down a slice of cheese before being sucked into the ring. Cat Noir leapt into the night, headed for his thinking spot the roof of the Notre Dame. The chilly air did wonders to cool him down, and the rush of adrenaline from leaping from rooftop to rooftop temporarily made him forget what he was so worried about, until his anxiety skyrocketed once more when he opened his eyes just when he was about to land at his destination and saw a figure in red. The shock sent him spiraling into a crumpled landing on the roof, and he was sure he would have sprained something if not for his magical suit. What was she doing here, though? Ladybug snapped around at the crash, shock evident on her face before she burst into a fit of giggles. Oh no, this was not the plan! Her being here was not going to help him clear his head or his doubts in the least. Yeah, ha ha, let's laugh at the injured cat. Ladybug paused. Okay. <laughs> she shrugged and laughed some more. Cat limped to sit next to her, grumbling. What are you even doing here? You got cold feet or something? She nudged him playfully, and Cat hesitated not knowing whether to admit it or not. 
Ladybug noticed, and she mellowed. Oh, was all she said. Cat took a deep breath. What about you? What are you doing here? Oh, you know, ruminating. Ruminating? <laughs> Who says that? Cat laughed, wiping his nose. People do, Ladybug protested. Ruminating. You know what that reminds me of? Cows. Cows? Yeah, you know, because they're ruminants. Get out of here. She shook her head. No can do, my lady. You have to admit, my fascinating presence has simply brightened your rumination. Ladybug was about to say something witty in response, but she stopped as she realized at the same time as Cat what he had called her. He knew she knew he hadn't called her that since she came back. Ladybug smiled. Remember that time you were being chased by your fans and you needed me to help you hide? Cat furrowed his brows, curious as to why she was bringing that up. Yeah, I made you run all around the city in your PJs that day. Ladybug laughed. And that one time, when we were fighting Reverser and he got us? You were such a scaredy cat. Hey now, let's talk about how you couldn't even put one foot in front of the other without tripping. Nuh-uh, you were the worst. And they spent the next 15 minutes reminiscing about their superhero days, nudging each other and snorting without a care in the world. They were looking out at the city when a comfortable silence fell between them, and Ladybug spoke up. Remember when Master Fu relinquished the miracle box to me? That was the best and worst day of my life. She laughed, and Cat Noir just looked at her, waiting for where, waiting for where this would lead. She cleared her throat. And when I read the letter he left me, I couldn't have felt more lost, even though he tried as much as possible to sound reassuring in it. I mean, there was still so much I didn't know. What would I do if the Kwamis got sick? How would I be able to prepare those power-ups with no experience? Did that mean I'd have to go through guardian training while juggling my other responsibilities as a civilian? All those unanswered questions, they... they made my anxiety fly. <laughs> she paused to wipe her nose. It affected my schoolwork, and I was always so tired. And then there was you. You were the best. <laughs> Being with you distracted me from the weight of my responsibilities, even if it was only temporary. Why didn't you tell me any of this? Kat said, his expression pained. I tried. Ladybug nodded. But I would hesitate, because I didn't want to burden you. Burden me? Marinette, I could have helped. No, you couldn't have. You could only have gotten hurt. What are you? It was when I had started considering telling you that I realized I hadn't, I hadn't given much thought to the Guardian status's effect on my relationships. And it was around that time you proposed to me, and I was so scared and confused, and the next thing I knew, I was falling. Cat closed his eyes as memories from that night unwillingly played in his mind. It was a nightmare, and Cat could still feel the sinking feeling from the way his heart had dropped along with her fall, and in an instant, he was leaning over the roof. But it was too late, and he watched in absolute horror as her transformation wore out mid-air. The pink light temporarily blinded him, and he heard Kara's screech, and when it faded... What he saw was Marinette lying unconscious on the hood of a car, shattered glass all around her. He remembered throwing himself off the roof without thinking, and sprinting to her side as people gathered. They were talking, but 
he could only hear static, as to his dismay his fingers were stained red. It was his flashing ring that grounded him some, so before he could detransform in front of all those people, he scooped Marinette as gently as he could and leapt away. They admitted Marinette to the hospital, and Adrian visited her every day as a civilian self and spent every night by her bed as cat. Until one day, a meeting held him up, and apparently that was when Marinette finally woke up, because when he arrived at her ward window with a rose and an apology for being late on his lips, she was gone. You should have seen it, Cat. How Master Fu couldn't remember the love of his life. I, I couldn't imagine you having to deal with something as painful as a partner with no memories of your love. You've lost enough already. And because I knew that if I tried explaining to you why we should break up, you'd be stubborn about it, and I was left with the only option that would ensure that you would forget about me. Cat hated the feeling of uncertainty settling in his guts. His heart was beating fast, and his palms were sweaty underneath his suit. Wait, wait. I know nothing has changed, and I would still lose my memories even if we got back together now. I guess when I saw your wedding announcement, I... I was enraged that my plan had actually worked. That... You forgot about me. She looked up at him, eyes reflecting the city lights. So I acted rashly and came to wreck your wedding. Kat swallowed as he chose his next words carefully, dreading what her answer would be. Because her response would either make or break everything. What are you... Saying. Ladybug blinked away her tears and smiled. <laughs> he wanted an explanation, right? I'm saying I left because after a mother and a father, I didn't want you to experience the pain of losing a wife. Cat felt his entire body ice over at the bombshell of a revelation as she stood and stretched. I know I couldn't have possibly picked a worse timing than this to finally explain, but I needed to tell you before I... Despite his utter shock and limited mobility, Cat managed to snap his head up to look at her. Before what? She paused, then stretched again with a sad smile. Never mind. Wait, no, you should really get some sleep. We wouldn't want a late groom, now would we? She latched her yo-yo onto the next building and tugged on it a bit to test it out. When she was satisfied with its firmness, she turned around to look at Cat with a smile that didn't reach her eyes, and it was deja vu all over again. How could he have missed the sadness in her eyes that night? The way her smile, though slight, should have nonetheless brightened her eyes, but didn't, just like it didn't now. Goodbye, Cat. And she swung into the night effortlessly ripping his heart mercilessly into two. Ha! Ah, thank you so much for listening to Satisfied Chapter 10. <laughs> if you liked it, <laughs> please do not hesitate to smash that like button and comment for the algorithm. Your comments really, really help. And I really, really love it when you do um, interact with me, uh, share your views on the story. So you guys just comment! <laughs> okay, why am I so excited? Because satisfied is just left with one chapter that's right satisfied is ending and i am so excited i am so thankful at how far um satisfied has come 
uh, in just a few months. Oh my goodness. Wow. Thank you so much. And I, I couldn't have done it without you guys. Thank you for your support, your subscriptions, your comments, your likes, ah, your views. <laughs> ah, this is huge for me. Thank you so much, guys. Um, stay tuned for the final chapter of Satisfied. I will see you there. Stay awesome. Bye.